We are talking about counter teams. This is what makes or breaks you in those pivotal Grand Arena Territory Wars moments. What team to take against what? You don't want to overkill, you don't want to underkill. And if you're like me, you're probably always overkilling, which can lead to issues where you don't have the right team later on and so what are the best teams and what are their counters this video is going to double as a territory war slash grand arena ranking video i'm going to tier all of the best teams into four different tiers uh kind of to combine for offense and defense i'm not going to do a separate list because then it just gets too complicated and then i'm going to go over every counter for those teams now i'm speaking very generally i know that there's like a million teams out there and so just bear with me while i give a more general overview um, there are going to be a lot of variables here but I'll do my best to cover the subject um, as thoroughly as possible to give you guys a good guide on what the best counters are for each team tier four we have got three teams in the tier four category and that is going to be Phoenix Rogue One and Ewoks now I, I understand Ewoks a lot of people feel Ewoks are super good and they are but Ewoks are also very soloable with just a simple nest as a counter. And so that's, you know, to me, it's hard to put them in anything but tier four if one single character can take the whole team on. Same with a Phoenix Squad. Phoenix Squad can be countered if you've got a good um, Wampa. Wampa will take out an entire Phoenix team if your Wampa is well equipped. And the, the Phoenix team would have to be pretty dang solid to withstand uh, that Wampa on defense. Rogue One is going to have tons of counters too. Uh, this is going to be, of course, Jin lead uh, with uh, Chirrut and Baze, probably Cassian K2S. So as well, Scoundrels are actually a very solid counter um, to this. This is actually, I'm showing footage right now of uh, my Scoundrel team taking on. I, I This was a, a sweaty match. Having a durable team with these guys um, is very helpful so that you can survive the match long enough. And you just it's a team you just got to chip away at and wait for your opportunity to take out those characters. Characters. Uh, scoundrels do a very good job with that. Um, you can see here I, I use Kira uh, with L3 and Vander Chewbacca and a couple um, extras. I had Sidious in there just to get some exposes out, which is really nice. Uh, but there's just ultimately there's a lot of variance that's going to take out um, uh, Rogue One team. This is just one that I kind of one of my trusty counters to go to now that Kira teams are n less used on defense now. Moving on to tier three, we have got Ray Jedi training is going to be in at tier three. Now, she might be more of a tier two team if we're just considering her offensive capability because Ray Jedi training is so good on offense. And I mean, really the hard counter to uh, Kylo Ren teams, which we're going to get into in a second. Uh, but Ray Jedi training works very well against so many different teams that most people are going to hold her for offense. But if you are countering her, if you do see her on defense, Night Sisters work very well. Um, Commander Luke Skywalker also works very well. Bounty Hunters are in the tier three category. Um, that is going to be um, usually with Django lead now, but also Bosk lead. Uh, JTR works really well. Anything that can, uh, basically you need to manage Bosk. So anything that can pin Bosk down or bypass him by being able to land that healing immunity. So you can do that healing immunity with JTR. Um, if you use Palp Thrawn, that's kind of my go-to for bounty hunters. Then that works really well because you can just fracture Bosk and then work on the rest of the team and not worry about that taunt. Uh, First Order can also work. My First Order uh, does a bit shaky against uh, those uh, bounty hunter teams but first order also can work especially if your Kylo Ren mask is going to get out out the gate and be able to pin down Bosk that's really what it all comes down to is you just got to find a way to manage Bosk if Bosk can get pinned down you'll be in pretty good shape uh, the variables are a bit different with uh, Django lead you may want to avoid Palpatine lead when going against Django lead because that burning is going to um, decrease your ability to have that bonus turn meter along with um, those debuffs are going to start decreasing your own potency so it makes it harder to land those stuns and then we got first order here in tier three. First order is usually a defensive team but this is merging more towards an offensive team lately um, which you know we've we've seen that they can counter bounty hunters and a few other teams uh, but first order are hard countered by Ray Jedi training and the, the way that you counter first order is very similar to how you counter boss teams a lot of it is about pinning Kylo Ren down and then working on the rest 
rest of the team. And so JTR works pretty well with that because she's going to be able to strip Termitor off of him, ability block him, and she's got that healing immunity, and they've got so many healing mechanics within uh, their faction synergy. Uh, Palpatine uh, with uh, with Thrawn will also work effectively against that because same thing, you can fracture... Um, you can fracture... Uh, Kylo Ren unmasked and then work on the rest of the team. My personal preferred counter is Ray Jedi Training. I don't think I've ever lost a match against First Order with Ray Jedi Training that I can remember. And then we've got our Empire team, which is also in Tier 3. Now, from a defensive perspective, there are a lot of counters to Empire teams. It really just kind of depends on what Empire team you're seeing and how fast their Thrawn is. Um, I like to mirror match Empire. If my Thrawn is faster, it seems pretty easy uh, to get in there. But then you may want to take in CLS, uh, with Han and Chewie if the Thrawn is faster just because Fracture can really disrupt the flow of battle. There may be some other counters there, but those are the ones that I've used when I've ended up seeing Empire, but ultimately I just don't see Empire very much. Uh, Empire is almost always held for offense. If we are looking at this just from an offensive lens, I'm probably putting Empire in Tier 2 because they counter so many things, especially having Thrawn there. Thrawn is one of the best counters to have in your back pocket, and so me personally, my recommendation, hold your Thrawn for offense because there's so many things you can use them against. Alright, moving on to Tier 2. In Tier 2, we've got CLS, Treya, Night Sisters, Old Republic, and Bastila Jedi. So let's start at the top. CLS, almost always going to want to use CLS on offense, in my opinion. There's just, again, a lot of teams that he counters so effectively that it's a tool that I don't want to leave um, unavailable to me. That said, CLS can really throw people off if you put him on defense. So if you do see him, um, Jedi Revan is usually what I'm going to take against him unless they put their Jedi Revan there as well. Uh, JTR with C-3PO can also be a pretty effective counter, especially because you're going to add so many bonus stats with C-3PO um, that can work as well. Uh, mirror matching it is also not a bad idea. You kind of flip a coin, though, for whose Han is going to go first. And so, ultimately, you need to take a meta team against CLS. This is actually a pretty solid defensive team. I think most people are just going to want to save their CLS for offense. Treya is the same way. Uh, that The Sith Triumvirate, I think a lot of people like to have at their offensive disposal. But I do see people placing... Uh, the Triumvirate. In fact, in this last Grand Arena I had, in the first round, my opponent had uh, Treya set on defense, and it was the only round, uh, the only team I lost against. Um, I, I ended up taking two battles instead of one, just because I didn't quite have the chops to get it. But if you see Treya, CLS tends to be a pretty good counter. You do need to have pretty good mods in your CLS, depending on where the other Treya team is, because if you can't get through uh, the, that, uh, that health fast enough, it's going to be pretty pretty sketchy. If it's a really decked out Treya team, you're probably going to want to take a more meta team like Jedi Revan against it. Next up, we have got Night Sisters. Now, probably the meta Night Sister team nowadays is going to be uh, Talzin with uh, Night Sister Zombie, Daka, Asajj Ventress, and Night Sister Spirit. And these teams are really, really tricky. I have failed before with my Talzin or with my Treya team against a Night Sister team. Well, it, it wasn't a. I, I lost my Scion against them because Spirit was able to deal so much damage. And so this team can be a trap. My personal new favorite counter for the Night Sisters is Django Lead. Um, I've started using this and it works very well. You do need to have good solid mods on your Django, but the strategy is basically to get out there, get some burn out there, restrict their ability to gain bonus turn meter, get as many debuffs out there as you can, use as much AoE as you can so that you can get to that contract, and then you're all going to get Bounty Hunter's Resolve once you take a turn, and Django Fett, or sorry, Boba Fett can just go through and execute one by one, and so you don't have to worry about Night Sister Zombie's reviving technique um, for other characters. And so that is very, very solid to take against uh, the Night Sister teams. Um, if you're not confident in your bounty hunter team, Treya tends to be a really good counter. Probably the hardest overkill counter to Night Sisters. And uh, basically, you're just going to want to isolate Zombie and go from there. Troopers can also be a great counter to this. This is going to be something I recommend for those of you who have really really methodically farmed your troopers my troopers suck against night sisters you guys know this i get crap about it all the time uh, but if your troopers are solid enough 
it's amazing to take troopers against night sisters because it just saves you so much uh so much uh, you know so many other offensive teams that you can use in other places next we've got one of everybody's new favorite defensive teams the old republic which is going to be karth with mission and zalbar and then there's a couple variants there now the biggest issue with this team that you need to deal with is going to be zalbar because zalbar is going to have a persistent taunt he he get he gains taunt whenever he gets that he uses a special ability and then also when mission falls below 100 percent health kind of like chert and Phase. And so you're going to need to find ways to manage that. Rex Wampa is a good way to do this because you can get that daze out there on an AoE basis, which helps manage mission with all of the DPS she brings to the table. And Wampa has a lot of DPS too. This counter is a little tentative though. I, I, I have not seen it work super well for me. Um, I, I do know Phoenix can work very well against it. Um, I personally prefer Ray Jedi training though. For this team if i see this team i'm going to try to use raid jedi training you're going to be able to clear that taunt and you're going to be able to add that healing immunity which really helps get through uh zalbar in particular who can be the biggest issue if you're using phoenix against this you need to have a pretty solid phoenix team uh, probably all gear 12 and then just stack that armor shred on zalbar with sabine and once you have enough stacks of armor shred on um on zalbar you can go ahead and take him out and then it ends up being more manageable but again kind of like troopers with night sisters you need to have a really solid phoenix team to pull that off and then we've got bastila jedi and a lot of people are saving Bastila for offense as well lately she's just a really good offensive team to have in your back pocket but first order can be a fantastic counter to Basla teams. They're very survivable and a, a really solid team to take against Basla. So that's what I would recommend for Basla Jedi. And then we've got our tier one best teams all around for Grand Arena and Territory Wars. And that is going to be Darth Revan with Malak, Jedi Revan, Padme, and General Grievous. Now, General Grievous, oh my gosh, should he be tier one? Yes, absolutely. And in my opinion, he might actually be a tier two team maybe towards the top in a tier two but the reason i bump him up and take him to tier one is because so few people have this team decked out that when you see it it can be really tricky to handle because you're not sure you haven't handled it before and so if you do see a general grievous team the best counters i have found are going to be cls or treya and you got to have them pretty ready and decked out to go against the grievous team um to, to handle this because it's just it, the team has so much synergy and grievous if you're not careful once you start killing those droids he's going to be able to hit like a crazy man <laughs> you just got to be really careful i've actually been caught before with grievous doing his aoe and having a ton of damage coming my way and almost losing matches because of it you got to be really careful with those grievous teams padme is also going to require meta teams to go against my best best recommendation is going to be cls um or darth revan or treya <laughs> everything else, i mean there, there might be other teams that you can use against it but so far i haven't found them um i've i've been able to win with cls when i see padme um i i have heard others using treya against her and then i've heard a lot of other teams that have just failed and so be very careful against padme team jedi revan is a very popular defensive choice now because people have darth revan uh, they can leave him for offense that's my personal preferred strategy put jedi revan on defense use darth revan on offense if you see jedi revan it's probably going to be best to use your own jedi revan mirror match it or darth revan cls teams can counter jedi revan along with uh, ray jedi training teams if they've got c3po in there but even those matches can be a bit sketchy we're talking 5v5 here on this video but for 3v3 cls han and chewy can be a great uh, 3v3 counter versus Je uh, jedi revan but with a five-man team you got to have a more specialized team that has been used to going against jedi revan teams with really solid mods to make it work and then the last team is darth revan that is obviously going to be the meta of all metas right now and look darth revan my opinion is that you're going to want to counter darth revan with your own darth revan now if you can come up with a solid counter it would be ideal to place your darth revan on defense if you've got him and if you know that you can beat the other team's darth revan assuming they've got him um with your own personal counter i just personally haven't found anything that feels that reliable now they do exist some people are using jedi revan with thrawn that can be a very solid counter you do need to have your thrawn fast enough to beat basil sean fallen out the gate because if you get corrupted battle meditation on thrawn 
fracture's not going to land and the whole team's going to fall apart. Uh, but that said, if you can get that fracture to have some valuable use, that team can be a very solid counter. I'm showing footage now of that working. Um, some people are using a couple other variations, but by and large, that seems to be the most valuable um, and viable non-Darth Revan counter. But again, my personal opinion is do what you do in squad arena every day. Um, that's, this is what I always do in Grand Arena with the current meta. Um, with Jedi Revan, I, I wanted to use what I was comfortable with. Um, if you place something, you know, if you place your Jedi Revan on defense before and they place theirs and it was like, you know, what, what am I going to do to get through him? I might have to two-shot it. Maybe they've got a counter for mine that they're going to be fine with. And so in my opinion, the only reason you want to set that meta team on defense is if you know you've got a counter that can beat it. Um, so if you do, great. Good on you. Some people do. Some people are doing that every day. That's fantastic. Me personally, I take a bit more of a conservative approach because I'm just concerned that I'm going to lose if I place my Darth Revan on defense. All right, my friends, I hope the video was helpful for you. If you did enjoy it, leave a like. I would really appreciate it. And if you guys um, have anything you would like to add to what counters certain teams on my list, let me know. I'm showing you that mass list right now so you can see what are all of those uh, teams that we discussed and what are their counters. And again, I hope it was helpful for you. Thanks again for joining my friends. And as always, my brothers, don't forget my dead body. Sorry about the mess.